All right, welcome to VMware Explorer 2024 Las Vegas. John, it's day three, man. How are you feeling? It's good. You know, um, I like all the, the big marketing and announcements, and let's see how many times we can say AI, but also, you know, what matters to customers, especially I keep hearing, is the, the execution. Absolutely. You know, and that's the, the core engine of that's engineering. Yeah. And um, I think it's time we, we talked, you know, in that direction about where we're going with Certainly that. Certainly, that, that's, that's a huge part. The other part, you know, we, I just did a session on, on VCF 5.2, some things that we've been, that's already on the truck. And yep. everybody in my session was like, that's great. What about 9, though? Like, when are we getting 9? And so I feel bad for everyone who's building software right now. They're like, <laughs> we, I just know, right? shipped oh, we just shipped this. just shipped this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so joining the conversation to talk to us not only about VCF 9, but also just, you know, the, the feel that customers having around some of these changes is the head of engineering for the VCF platform, a new Carpet Car, a new welcome back. Thank you. Happy to be here with both you, John, and Pete. Absolutely, yeah. We, we always love having you on. We saw you on the uh, on the BCF keynote. Yeah. Uh, and I saw you talking about, first of all, the demos were amazing. William, you and William did the demos talking yeah. about some of the stuff on BCF 9. It's super impressive. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to get my hands on it myself, and I work here, but really good stuff. But I also heard you talking about you know, like the three personas, uh -huh. and I thought that was a really interesting talk track. I'd love to maybe just chew on that for a minute. Yeah. You know, if you think about the customer landscape, Right? and all the different teams that we need to cater to. There's three, three key personas we have to consider when we are designing software. You know, basically what we're doing is building, helping them build a private cloud experience for their customers. And our job is to enable these specific admin personas so that we consider them when we are actually designing the system. So three that are most critical are you know, the infra admin essentially is the person we've been catering to all along. Now, infra admins are really elevating themselves to become cloud admins. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, right. There's a, it's no longer just compute resource. They're having to, you know, work on all these other different capabilities. and Absolutely. And, and cloud admins have a much um, harder job because they need to abstract a lot of the raw infrastructure, configuration, operations, diagnostics, and troubleshooting from their consumers and their customers. So what we've done with VCF9 in particular, when we are designing a unified product that can serve the needs of a private cloud, we're looking at how we can make the life easier for the infra admin so they can elevate their position to become that cloud admin. And they shouldn't have to worry about operations, infrastructure, monitoring, diagnostics, any of it. it. And besides that, there's a couple of other things we help them with, right? In nine, we made it super simple for these cloud admins to now upgrade, manage, operate at scale, fleet, le fleet level in, you know, from the same yep. one place. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 great to have these platforms and have them that they're they're great for the consumers of and easy to use, but they also need to be easy to maintain and and exactly. yeah. it's you know it's I, I've seen some very there's some very fancy cars out there. I occasionally see them like oh I really want that, but I'm like oh but the maintenance on yeah. that yeah, it, and no one wants to be bogged down by maintenance. But yeah. again, it's 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 a part of the job, right? Ultimately, they owe it to the business to keep the infrastructure running and keep the lights on. When I, I remember there were some early waves of customers and even some um, you know regional cloud partners and platforms out there trying to build clouds and they would build something and it was good on day one and it was secured, it worked and people would start consuming it. And then the people who built it would run off and be like, my work here, <laughs> mission accomplished, my work here is done, fly out. And then no one would maintain it. And then suddenly years later, it's like, wait, this, this, this cloud platform never got patched, you know, our, you know, we're failing PCI audits, what's going on, like that, that day two, that's the hard thing. Absolutely. And just to touch on that, right, we recognize a bunch of our, a lot of our customers, they actually don't even have the full stack VCF. Yeah, right. They have maybe vSphere, in some cases vSphere and vSAN, in some cases, you know, NSX, Ops, they have different components already deployed, but oh, yeah. they don't have that full stack and they're not able to really drive that full cloud experience as a result. So what we've done in particular, and this is starting with 5.2, by the way, we're helping with the brownfield import of their existing environments into this full stack experience. And we're making it super easy for them to then you know, drive value from this full stack without 
too much of a heavy burden to sort of bring these bespoke, you know, disparate environments into this one what? unified and, and hopefully they can save enough time from the, the life cycle, the easy wins in that, that they yeah. can harvest that time to then work on getting the rest of the silos broken down. Yeah, it's an excellent way to go from uh, from maybe small parts, maybe just vSphere, then actually getting to a full stack is certainly through the import. Right, right. right. And another thing that we've, we are offering now is for these cloud admins to be empowered to carve out infrastructure in a multi -ten multi tenancy is now built in. Yep. Right, into nine. And we'll enable them to carve this out for their businesses to then self-serve and run independently, yeah. which is huge. Yeah, yeah. Mul I remember, you know, you go back 10 years ago, multi-tenancy, well, that, that's something for VCD. That's only yeah. service yeah. providers yeah. worry about yeah. that. Everybody else is just show back, but there really are, people need to carve real boundaries for security or internal uh, yeah. guardrails. 100%, like our, our own Broadcom IT team is leveraging multi-tenancy to serve the 26 divisions Yep. of Broadcom, right? Majority of our largest enterprise or even mid-sized enterprise customers need this capability in-house because they truly want to be able to hold the business groups. Uh, you basically give them the keys to their kingdom right. but holding the infrastructure guardrails and the security and also holding them accountable for cost optimization, utilization, all of that, yeah. right? So, yeah. We've so, we're solving all of this. Yeah. It's it's a huge um, sort of trend we're seeing. Uh, our customers are now ready. They're ready to adopt this. Absolutely. So we talked about the cloud admin. Should I go into the, the next persona? Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, there's a couple of others we really care about, right? It's the platform engineering team and the developers. The DevOps. The, the DevOps and the developers and the platform engineers who whose job is basically to enable the end application admin to self-serve and consume these curated infrastructure and application services. Database as a service, you know, VPC as a service, whatnot, Templates, right? Templates, yeah, the other yeah. things. And now with Nine, because we have this whole journey where the cloud admin is carving our infrastructure for the platform teams to now leverage, build curated, cloud marketplace like public clouds, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And deliver those services uh, in a curated form for the end users to then consume, like in a self-service model. Yep. Easily be able to deploy their workloads and with all the security guardrails and policies in place. So that we're making it super simple for those teams. Yeah, no, not yeah, making the developer I saw on the uh, keynote. That yeah. was actually fantastic. Yeah, I would put a pitch in for the demo, please, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll talk about the the recording and I'd love for the audience to go and listen to that and look at the demos. It's just fascinatingly I good. Agree. <laughs> I agree. I yeah. agree. William Lamb never disappoints, but oh, that's, yeah. that's a whole nother story. So, all right, we've talked about cloud admins. We've talked about the dev developers. Yep. There is a third is, of course, the IT executive. And the IT leaders and executives need to understand how their infrastructure is providing the necessary business impacts. And with the ability to optimize costs, good resource utilization, yep. meet their SLOs with the right insights. And so now with all the operations pieces and diagnostics integrated into this one place, which is VCF operations, you have everything in that one place yeah, to yeah. go centrally. You can manage your entire fleet. You can look at your utilization. You can look at your costs. You can optimize your costs. And you can meet your SLOs or identify where you're not meeting your SLOs yeah. all from a central play place. Yeah. So Nice. I like it. I like it. So we, we, we've hit the three personas. That's, that's great. But yeah. DCF9 is quite the game changer all, all the way down the stack, right? Starting with compute, yeah. also storage and networking. And there have been so many great enhancements to each of those. I know we don't have you for an hour, but I would love to just touch on a few of those. Maybe we can even just start with compute. Like, yeah. what was maybe your favorite thing? I know John. I know what John's is. I don't even have to say well, it, but what yeah, was I'd your favorite? What John's is, but, <laughs> but, yeah. Mine's memory cheering. I'm Absolutely. like really- Memory cheering. I'm, I'm, yeah. I, would, I that. would be talking about that too. But before we touch on that, I just want to wrap up a game changers. Yeah. As you mentioned, um, the operations and automations in itself is a huge game yeah, changer. Sure. And that's what the demo showcases. That's what William's demo showcases. But we as a 
an organization continue the, to push the needle on our core platform. You know, the simply the raw power of our core compute storage and network. Absolutely. It keeps getting better yeah. with every release. And with nine, we're not going to disappoint there, yeah. right? So advanced memory tiering, right? Being able to um, leverage NVMe for your core pages and be able to keep your hot data on DRAMs. So yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a game changer. Yeah, the, when you start looking at the cost delta on that stuff, it's just an enormous amount of savings yeah, like that's all day sitting there. It's, it's, it's great. Our customers are going to derive a lot of value in terms of cost optimization um, with that feature. And another, my favorite one, okay. is also confidential computing with Intel, powered by Intel TDX. So this is this is an interesting thing because it, you know, this has been a concern. I know, you know, normally in my data center that's under my lock and key. I'm not necessarily worried about someone trying to steal a hot dam or physically, you know, get access to things. Yeah. But as you start running hardware in disparate places, or maybe I'm running a private cloud inside of a hyperscaler cloud. Yeah. I've got some trust issues, <laughs> and I, this looks like it may be able to help address that. Yeah. Th this will you you get to keep the keys of your kingdom, right? And. You can encrypt, you can isolate, and you can do it at the hypervisor layer as well as workloads, right? Which I think we had the VM encryption, yeah. uh, bring your own key yeah. uh, feature, uh, but this is, you can do it at the hypervisor layer. You can truly yeah, leverage workload. TDX and yeah. do uh, isolate and be able to manage your own keys and, and your own trust. Oh, wow. So being able to do that across sub workloads that I host, I got up different tenants or security zones with different, right. different exactly. keys. So, I mean, maybe I'll finally be able to argue with the security team that, okay, yes, maybe we can run my authentication servers and my, you know, other web Workloads. tier on the workloads. I stop having to build 40 bespoke clusters exactly. for security zones. Exactly. That, that is the advantage. You, you, you got it. Absolutely. Well, there are certainly a lot, and, and there's a there's an announcement block that goes through all of them. But I, I would love to pivot to storage. Storage, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of things going on with storage, and uh, you know we've talked to several people already, customers, uh, partners as well. But it seems to it seems that data protection, oh yes, data protection is cer is a, certainly a big deal. It's huge, and and I think our customers know that vSAN is already best of class storage, right? And with the vSAN ESA architecture, uh, you get so much more, right? Uh, one of the things that we are bringing uh, with Nine is um, global deduplication, which is at the cluster level, actually, yeah, which right. gives you significant more server consolidation, right? It's like 46% more. So, yeah, I would, I would like to make my cost per gigabyte go down 46%. <laughs> so, yes, yes. Yeah. I'll take two. So, <laughs> I'll take two. And it's so much better than traditional storage. Yeah. You know, we keep making inroads into um, improving our data protection story right so we have snapshots we have deep snapshots you get yeah. you know so much more in terms of performance for your replication and data protection with deep snapshots right um we have dr you know yeah. dual site failure recovery right. with uh vsan esa stretch clusters, cluster yeah supporting right? that with vcf now with, with yeah so that's that's a that's a big thing um storage teams the, the storage team is constantly innovating and yeah. pushing the envelope. Like we talked about disaggregated storage with Visa and Max. We talked about ESA, which is the new architecture. And you get to manage all these variations in storage from, from the same place. You don't have a different operational burden trying to manage your external array in a, in a different way compared to you know, your HCI or your disaggregated. It's challenging because on one hand, you want storage to be boring. So if it's too exciting, something bad's really happened. But yeah. on the other hand, every time I talk to the principal engineers on that team, yeah. they've have, they have come up with a new perspective on a new way to push this platform forward and, yeah. and leverage that investment and do so in a, a fun but yeah. safe way. Yeah. So, And then, of course, we can't forget about our networking. No, you can't. Yeah. You can't forget about networking. It, and it I, I definitely heard there have been some advance and enhancements to VPC. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So VPC is... I mean, any customer I've talked to, yep. they've been asking about getting that. That truly makes it a cloud-like experience for for network isolation, right? The VPC construct. Now the VPCs are deeply integrated into vCenter and can be really seamlessly, easily um, consumed from our automation layer, which wasn't the case. Now, and this is uh, something that you know. 
networking, I feel like, was one of the last disciplines in infrastructure to adopt automation. It, there, there's just a small army of people who learned how to chisel like CLI commands in and like take ticket, chisel VLAN, you know, into switch yeah, yeah. and do that. And, and even in our case, like it still was a separate management interface, a separate area and, and seeing this brought into yeah. like seamless workloads. This, you know, yeah, you can rewire your workloads. You can actually take your VLAN back networks, wire them through NSX into VPCs and you don't really need a advanced networking skills for this. Yeah, you don't have to, yeah. I mean, overlays yeah. are great, but you don't have to re everything on day one into right, that. Right, right. And then the other thing about the performance improvements, I should touch on that as well. So the NSX enhanced data path right. actually is designed to give you a lot more performance uh, throughput, yeah. right? So uh, for it really is designed for your high bandwidth, high throughput, uh, modern applications. And I, I don't think people really appreciated the 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 compute over the the compute overhead that is involved in pushing packets around when we all ran one and ten gig networks. But as we're starting to eye this, you know, plus twenty fives in the dustbin at this point, we're going straight to hundred. We're going and then we're eyeing these four hundred and eight hundred, yeah, you know, optical, yeah, and yeah, AI and, yeah, AI yeah, and yeah. going to eight hundred and beyond. The, we have to pay attention to the cost of pushing those packets, and we if we, anything we can do to optimize that's going to be big. And, and we'll keep pushing the needle on that. Yeah. So many great enhancements, but uh, I know I only have you for a little bit of time. I, I've been really wanting to ask you, you know, you're, you're head of engineering for, for VMware Cloud Platform. So you, you, you've been in the engineering field for a while. Yeah. Like, how have these changes affected even internally in VMware by Broadcom? Yeah. Like, how does that affect, you know, aggregating a team of management with yeah. the same goals? How, how has yeah. it been for you? No, that's a great question. So prior to the acquisition, right, we had multiple business groups um, targeted to uh, what we are offering in the product. So we had modeled our organization to what the, the customers have in yeah. their organizations. Networking team, there's a storage team, there's a you know compute team, there's a separate you know cloud consumption team. And so everything was sort of catered to that. But we are realizing that that landscape has changed and that's not all. Broadcom and VMware has uh, recognized that we have to change internally to meet that demand. And so after the acquisition, once the VCF division came together as one team, bringing together all these individual engineering teams into one cohesive engineering organization, it's made of a world of difference to us in terms of execution. Because now our priorities are aligned to meet that objective of delivering that the promise of the uh, the cloud yeah. uh, to our customers it's 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 fun there's a there's an internal conference we have called radio that we used to run yes. and it used to it was this once a year let's bring in these engineers from all of these different groups and it was it was great and in the other case it also kind of showed the problem showed of the, the old bottle right. that i would i would be like watching one engineering team from one side of the the business learn that another engineering team on the other side of the business were working on the exact same problem from different angles. From different angles. And it somehow never met until they right, ended up right. in that same room. Yeah. And it, it looks like, yeah. you know, we're solving yeah. that problem. So, yeah. you know, I've been talking to so many customers, right? And the one thing they have observed this time round that we are all speaking the same language, same tune, same priorities, and it's delightful for the customers. Yeah. This is exactly what they need. Yeah, I right? agree. That is a beautiful thing. It's a great story. I, you know, I, I, I know when Ha came and he made these decisions. Sometimes it takes somebody from the outside to look at this and say, "You should be doing it this way." Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And now we all look and, at it and go, "Yeah, that actually makes yeah. perfect sense." And we were very quick to adapt and yeah, evolve, yeah. and we're so glad we did it. We're, yeah, we're yeah. all happy that we did it. Absolutely, right? so. it's a beautiful thing. Uh, Anu, I want to thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your week here at Explore. Absolutely. It's always fun being here. Looking forward to doing this again in Barcelona. Absolutely. All right. Thank you.